Hello. We could be about to go nuclear big time in Somerset. We found out this week that far from wanting to build one extra power station at Hinkley Point, they want to build two. Ha, you say. That would take years of planning rows and inquiries. But maybe not. A new law is coming that would streamline the process so that big projects aren't held up for years by objections. Tom Burridge reports on the plans to build Hinkley C and D. There was a beginning. We're very much a West Country power station. Our connections, our direct grid connections are to Taunton. Hinkley Point on the Somerset coast is now Britain's biggest nuclear concentration, with its second atomic power station now in action. It's all too beautiful. And another beginning. It's all too beautiful. It's all too beautiful. Oh, Were you not expecting it? Not really, no. And an end. But nuclear production at Hinkley goes on and on and on and on and on and on. So wind the clock on again because Hinkley B behind me could be generating electricity until at least 2016. The electricity you're using to watch this programme on your television or computer could well have come from behind me because steam turns turbines that generate enough electricity for a million homes and politicians are now talking about the next nuclear generation. ABC. Yes, the nuclear debate at Hinkley is as simple as ABC. Oh, and now D, as the bosses of this huge power station told the politics show this week. A is no longer working, B keeps going. And C and D? Well, British Energy, the company that runs and owns Hinkley Point, has earmarked that land down there for a possible two new nuclear reactors. Follow me round, though, because land you can see in the distance was bought a few weeks ago by the French company EDF. Cooling water with the grid access, you know, we think it's a very, very good prospect. Of course, some disagree. Campaigners talk about radioactive waste and the health implications for people living here. I wondered why exactly Hinkley was chosen. The last time they tried to build a new station at Hinkley saw a public inquiry in 1987. But a bill going to the Lords this week would mean scenes like this would remain a thing of the past. And if there should be an emergency down there now, <laughs> they'll have to evacuate from you lot here. The government's new planning law would scrap an inquiry. Major infrastructure projects would not have to get the OK from the local council's planning committee. Instead, councillors would assess the impact on the local area and report to a planning commission who would make the final decision, not the government. The main difference is... Well, this is the land that's been bought by EDF and there's going to be two... Others are less enthusiastic. Overlooking the land bought by EDF, Green Party member and campaigner David Taylor is clear why, when it comes to Hinkley, the planning bill is bad news. The main objection is that it's taken people's right to be involved in the decision away from them. At the moment, under the current inquiry system, people can present witnesses, they can cross-examine government so-called experts. All of that's going to be taken away. But another anti-nuclear voice says the bill could be a good thing. It might benefit other big projects and encourage investment in renewable energy. I think it could be a good thing because it could be used, in fact, to kick-start renewable energy schemes like uh, the wind farm that was turned down by our local authority. In fact, two wind farms in Somerset have recently been refused planning applications and I would have thought that this body that was looking at the nation's energy needs as a whole and wanted to promote, promote renewable energy could actually be used to do just that. <laughs> The energy needs of a nation are far from simple. The cows won't have a new nuclear neighbour here until probably 2018 at the earliest. Politicians, though, have to look to the future. For now, nuclear is part of Plan A.
Well, let's uh, talk about all that. Here with me in the studio is the Green Party campaigner who we saw in the film, that's David Taylor, and joining us from our studios in Cardiff is the South West Regional Director of the CBI. That's another David, David Rosso. Well, Mr Rosso, starting with you, it's understandable that business wants quick planning decisions, but is that fair? I think we need to look at what needs to be achieved in the UK. Over the next two decades, we need to invest about £100 billion in our energy infrastructure. That's about seven fossil fuel powered, fossil fuel powered power stations, about seven nuclear, as the ones we've seen at, uh, proposed for Hinkley. It's about 45 offshore wind farms. Uh, it's about a dozen uh, gas uh, storage facilities to make sure that we have the supplies we need to go through the winter. And the planning system, as it is at the moment, just can't cope. So you're we, suggesting that we just steamroll them through? No, I'm suggesting that we have a thorough debate at a national level about what we need for the UK's energy infrastructure to service the whole country, conducted by government, scrutinised by parliament, by our elected representatives. Um, the planning bill will require each individual project to go out for consultation with the community before any application is put in. Okay. And then we have the safeguards at, uh, at inquiry level with the, the IPC, where local authorities and local communities get okay, to present well, so, to the IPC. OK. Uh, well, David Taylor here in the studio. Um, that sounds reasonable. What's the problem with that? Well, I think people often argue that democracy is too expensive, um, that it takes too long. Um, but what price democracy? You know, if once you strip out a really important part of local democracy, there's not going to be any pudding but come in the back again. You were on the original Hinckley inquiry, weren't you? You'd have strung that out for as long as you possibly could. No, the whole point there is to ensure. Well, you stood that in front of a car, didn't you, for example? It, yes, that's nothing to do with the inquiry. Oh, right. I, I did take part in actions. That's separate. Right. No, the, the 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 main point is that local people have an opportunity to cross-examine the so-called experts to present their own witnesses, that the people who are going to be directly affected by these decisions have a role in those decisions. But once do you, you accept that it's been abused by some campaigners who use every trick in the book, and of course, why not, to try and string these things along? Well, it's easy enough to make inquiries a little shorter. You know, the government ministers could take a little, uh, a shorter period of time to actually come to their conclusions. But there is no argument for taking out the whole element of local democracy. Public inquiries are a vital forum and a way in which local people can express their views and put forward technical expert advice which is going to be helpful. Okay, David Rosser, what do you make of that? I mean, business has to get on with local communities, doesn't it? Absolutely, and the, the bill as proposed requires companies to go and have full consultation with the communities before the application process starts. This isn't about taking out democracy. UK government should look at the technological aspects of what we need. They should debate nuclear power. They should debate the technologies in Parliament with our elected representatives scrutinising government. But we don't need to debate t nuclear technology and, and re-examine government policy at every single local inquiry around the country. That's what's stopping things happening. Well, we do need to debate these new technologies. These are untested technologies. The, the EPR that's proposed for Hinckley is untested. It hasn't been used anywhere in the world. And the so-called consultation is a sham. It's an opportunity for people to simply write in and put their opinions. It's not the kind of full democracy that we have at the moment. Interestingly, the, the last Hinckley inquiry, you, you lost the appeal, but you sort of won the public argument, didn't yeah. you? And it's that, I suppose, which matters in the end. Because some of the arguments won through... And that's the key thing to understand, that when you have a public airing of things, when the debate is transparent, which it won't be under these, current, these new proposals, then there is an opportunity for things to move forward and for more people to be involved you, in the You decisions. say that, of course, but of course by arguing and succeeding in stopping Hinkley being built, our carbon footprint is greater now than it would have been. Well, that's got nothing to do with that. That's because the government has not got engaged in developing renewables and energy conservation. And really, that's the priority now. It's not these high-tech solutions. It's getting engaged in real energy conservation, energy-efficient projects. OK, David Rosser, anything you've heard convinces you that uh, uh, this planning law isn't a good thing? I'm afraid not. It will retain democracy. This isn't about nuclear. This is about keeping our lights turned on in a couple of decades' time. We won't be able to invest in offshore wind and all the other renewable technologies either if we don't sort out our planning system because every technology has got opponents who are willing to lie down in front of cars and try to stop things happening. And we've got to simplify the system. OK, we'll leave it there. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you.